prologue commence. Yashi was coming back from a mail station to get a weekly letter from his parents. The area is quite rural and silent. While walking, the letter gets blown out of his hands by a gust of wind into a tall tree. Being so young and barely able to use magic properly, he struggles to get the letter from between the leaves and branches, only being able to jump. Come on, I can barely reach it. Yashi waits for another strong gust of wind to bring the branches lower. When that wind comes, he jumps and barely touches the edge of the letter. Landing on his feet, he sighs. Maybe if I'm careful, I can get it down with magic. Then again, I don't think any of the magic I have can get it down without destroying the tree in the process. And I don't want to get in trouble either. Hmm. Along the sidewalk, not that far away, two little girls are helping an elderly lady. Here you are, Miss Okuma. Thank you two so much. No, no problem, Miss Okuma. I'll be sure to tell both of your parents how much of a help you've been when I get the chance. You two go along now. Have a nice day. Miss Akuma closes her front door. Dia and Coco walk out and onto the sidewalk. Woo! That was fun. Well, Dia, my parents will be a little worried if I don't show my face in a bit. I know. I was going to head home as well. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Oh, yeah. Okay. Coco lets go of Dia's wrist as she starts walking down the sidewalk, waving at Dia. See you, Dia. Bye, Coco. Dia begins walking down the sidewalk, admiring the rows of homes. Multiple pass her on her left, causing her to stop to look at the large line of balancers. Everyone else on the street does the same. As Dia turns the corner, she notices Yashi jumping under a tree. Hmm? Dia continues to walk, getting closer to Yashi without him noticing her. Dia stops next to him as Yashi lands on his feet. I might not even get it back. I wonder if Nisuke will get it down for me. Yashi looks to his right making eye contact with Dia as she stops a few feet away. Startled from the encounter, he remains frozen. The two of them stare in silence as a brown leaf falls from the tree, landing in the middle of them. Whoa, how long has she been watching me? Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. What are you doing? Oh, um... My letter, it got stuck in the tree. I was trying to get it back. Dia looks up, spotting her letter dangling between the branches. Would you like some help? I don't want to be rude, but you're shorter than me. How do you plan on helping? I could get on your back. My back? Okay. Yashi moves back under the letter and crouches. Dia walks to him and puts her legs around his neck. Yashi holds on to Dia's legs as he slowly stands. Whoa, I didn't think you'd be able to pick me up. Well, my brother and sister make me physically train my body without my sustain from time to time. Cool. Move back just a tiny bit. Okay. Now she takes a step back. Dia grabs the letter between her index and middle finger. I got it. What? A heavy gust of wind pushes against Dia and Yashi from behind. Dia leans forward out of control, which causes Yashi to lose his balance. Yashi stumbles around before landing both himself and Dia in a pile of leaves next to the tree. He crouches up, rubbing his side. Uh, are you okay? Huh? Where did she go? Suddenly, the piles of leaves lift from the ground. Yashi falls back onto the ground. The leaves fall off Dia's body. Dia's rubbing the back of her head. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. The two laugh at their situation. Yashi stands and reaches a hand out to Dia. Dia takes the hand, supporting her as she stands up. While Dia's dusting her skirt off, Yashi looks up at the letter. It is farther up in the tree. What? There's no way we can get that back now. Wait. I can use magic. We might damage the tree. Don't worry. I have a neat trick that I've yet to tell anyone. Stand back. Okay? Here I go. Dia raises her hands at the letter. A dark blue aura surrounds her hands and makes its way up to the letter. A few moments later, the letter begins to float up from in between the twigs and comes down. Open up your hands. Yashi opens up his hands. The letter lands onto his hand. Oh, cool. That's advanced psychokinesis. Yep, sure is. Wow, you must be really strong then. My mom told me that I had a lot of amazing aluminums for my age, but she's not going to focus heavily on me till I'm 10. Oh, 
Dia puts her hands down and moves closer to Yashi, touching his shoulder while looking down at the letter. What's inside the letter? It's just a letter from my parents. Your parents? Yeah, they live overseas, so they send me letters to check on me. If you don't mind me asking, are they coming back? I'm not sure. I just moved here a few months ago, but hopefully still. That's good. Well, I don't mind you reading it with me, but you have to wait till Nitsuka's shop is open. Nitsuka? He's one of the inlet of parlors, right? Yeah, just around the corner from here. Suppress Earth Seals. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Excuse me? Yeah, yes My name is Dia King. Could you tell me yours? Yashi Taramasa. Yashi? Almost like the first ever hero's name, right? No, you it's nothing like his. Dia backs away, a little shaken from Yashi's increase in mildness. Knowing that wasn't the nicest of tones, Yashi takes a step back. I'm sorry. Yashi quickly turns around and starts to jog away. I'll see you at Nitsuka's. Okay. A few hours pass before Nitsuka's shop is open. Yashi heads over to it after playing in a small park in the woods alone. And once he makes it to the shop, he stands in front of the door and gently opens it. He scans the room and finds no one. As the door closes behind him, a gray light flickers above him. One moment. A few seconds pass before Nitsuka is seen coming from the back. Oh, Yashi. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Have another letter for me? Yes, sir. Well, let's get started. A few minutes later, outside the shop, Dia has just arrived, mumbling to herself. Hopefully I didn't miss him. As Dia reaches for the door, a Mongol appears in front of her. Cocoa? From Cocoa, urgent. Her device speaks in a monotone voice. Dia swipes her Mongol up to answer. Dia, have you seen the news? No. What happened? It's terrible. It's about Alma. It's just been forwarded out to everyone. Dia swiftly explores through her screen into opening the news application. On instant discovery, Dia covers her mouth as she looks at the first picture. The picture's point of view is looking at an island from the ocean. The shot is about a 500 mile long picture of the right side of the island. A destroyed civilization is in full view on the screen of Dia's Mongol. Tall buildings and forests are seen on fire and collapsed. Several craters are scattered throughout the ground from large blasts or cannon shots. The energy dispositor that sits in Alma's capital is at an angle, broken. The destruction of Alma's energy dispositor deactivates the nation's protective barrier. The remains of particles leave a thin layer of pure energy above Alma's sky. <laughs> The Dark Army attacked them last night. Almost a hundred recipients invaded Alma. This is horrible. All those innocent people. I know. The conflict between Alma and the Demon King just gets worse and worse with every year. And I bet Kurosi is just taking that advantage that the sixth generation hero is nowhere to be seen. Alma's so far away. They might not get support in time. Makatama is their best bet. You're right, Dia. If only there was some way I could help. But we're too young, and that's way too dangerous. Maybe Wait. in Kokola. I'll call you back. Okay. As Dia vanishes her Mongol, she turns to look at the door. Right after, it bursts open, knocking Dia onto her bottom. Yashi? They make eye contact. Yashi is in tears. He quickly looks away and runs down the sidewalk. The M letter falls in front of Dia. The letter? Dia starts to read the letter. As she continues to read, tears start to drop from her eyes as well. His parents were in Alma. Nitika steps outside the door. Yashi! Looking to his right, Nitika sees Dia chasing after him. Yashi continues to run through their town, sadness. Dia tries to focus on him through all the people and markets. After a minute, Yashi takes a turn into an uncolonized forest. Only knowing it to be an attraction, Dia continues to follow Yashi anyway. 
Dia shields her head while wiping her eyes. Now where is he going? After a while of trying to catch up to him, Dia ends up lost in the clearing, yelling. Yashi, where did you go? Dia stops in the middle of the clearing. Mom told me not to, but I have no choice. She puts her right hand on her chest closed and the other in the air with her palm open while also closing her eyes. Dia's aura, unseen, flourishes throughout the forest looking for Yashi's aura. There you are. Inside Yashi's home, he stands in front of his older brother. Are you positive, Yashi? Please tell me you're kidding around. No, brother. I'm not. I can't believe it. There's no way mom and dad could be dead. Yashi, I'm going to be the one to tell Akuma, okay? Kato sits on his bed, now being out of eye with Yashi. Kato hugs Yashi. Yashi begins to sob and Kato's eyes start to water as well. Moments later, Kato's grief has settled slightly, yet Yashi cannot seem to rest. Yashi nods before he leaves the room and walks downstairs. Upon reaching the bottom, he sits on the wall that lends up the stairs and falls against the floor, covering his face. Dia stands at the open front door to the right of Yashi. An angry frown grows across Yashi's face as his tear-covered hands turn into fists. Yashi. Dia, you followed me? Of course I did. I just felt as much pain as you do. I'm sorry about your parents. It's all because of Karosi. You're right. It'll always be the Demon King's fault. He terrorizes whoever he pleases. It's been like that for a few years now, and even worse ever since the sixth hero suddenly vanished a few months ago. Every Sierra in their right has been doing their best in trying to stop the Dark Army's minions. Even Macadamia. I feel as though we need more strong Illuminate users. I'm going to be one of them. You're not alone. I also want to become stronger. At first, I was going to start when I got older, but this? To get strong enough to avenge my parents, I'm going to have to start training seriously today. Hey, you can't just steal the spotlight like that. I'm going to trade just as hard to protect those who are innocent. I don't care how strong anyone might seem or how young we might be. I just can't tolerate it anymore. In our case, I guess that makes us partners, right? Yeah. Or purification. purification. The two shot out while fist bumping, their voices ringing through the forest around them. Seeing their hands together, Dia lightly grinned. 